Uh, can you tell us what step can be taken post Expo to ensure uh, ongoing trade and mm -hmm. collaboration between Cambodia and Indonesia in terms of trading? I think that's um, one of the responsibilities that needs to be taken up by the embassy. Um, not only our embassy in Phnom Penh, but also um, the Cambodian embassy here in Jakarta, is how to make sure that uh, these kind of activities is not only a one-off event, but they actually result in um, sustainable interactions among the the, the the suppliers and also the importers as well, yeah. and how they actually come into an agreement later on. Um, it doesn't have to be an MOU, but some sort of deals that they could actually um, result in actual um, products being sent to Cambodia or products being sent from Cambodia to Indonesia. So these are some of the things that needs to be done, um, that it needs to be pushed, it needs to be reminded of by, by people um, like, for example, myself and also my staff and also colleagues um, in the, the embassy of um, Cambodia here in Jakarta. Yeah. This is a very good question because every year this, ex this expo has attracted a lot of uh, these, uh, visitors and also a lot of uh, participants to, to come to take a look at what products are Indonesia is producing. So, the most important thing is like to showcase our products also to in Cambodia. Like last month, there is this uh, uh, Day uh, Indonesia that happened in uh, Kopik, in uh, Cambodia, in uh, Kopik. So this is actually a good example of a uh, two-way this uh, trade, uh, what they call it, the trade enhancement activities. Because the visitors who come here, they have seen the products, they like it. You must have a uh, following up works from the Indonesia side. So, the trade agency, like the trade expo activities, is actually a good platform just for people to meet, but to further enhance the 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 tradings or to make sure that there's a continuity of the tradings, we will need to invite a lot of uh, those people from Indonesia also to come over to Cambodia to take a look at Indonesia, what's going on, and also the market in, in Cambodia. How can they actually customize or bring in the relevant products into uh, a Cambodia? Because by having a smaller group of people to come to Indonesia might not be able to portray what the country needs. But by having the Indonesians producer or Indonesians traders to go to Cambodia, they will actually see how does a Cambodian lives, you know, how what kind of product whether Cambodians are loves to have, and then they can start to see how can they bring the products into this uh, uh, yeah, Cambodia. But again, trade always comes with two factors, right? Payment and logistic. So these are two things that actually, by having a forum like this, is also going to, to, to help the, the, you know, the traders. First thing is, from the infrastructure side, how can we actually ship products from Indonesia to you know, Cambodia in a more efficient way? Because at the moment, I don't think there's enough uh, frequency of streamers going on. Secondly, also the payment solutions. Because I, I, I would love to see more and more financial institutions working together between Indonesia and Cambodia. Because like what our ambassador was saying earlier, in Cambodia we have actually more than 100,000 uh, Indonesian. So on the financial banking side, it was also help. These 100,000 people that who lives in Cambodia, I am very sure some of them are selling Indonesian produce. Correct. Then these people who sell Indonesian product will have to pay, make payments to the Indonesian supplier too. So financial, this is uh, what the kind of facility will help them to save costs more efficiently. And logistic will actually help them to save costs also on the logistic, right? So these are two things that I, I, I believe if after the trade event like this, it can be further developed into a more collaboration between in Cambodia and Indonesia in terms of logistics, in terms of banking, and then it will enhance the trade even further. So, uh, in order to bring some agreement between consumer yeah. and supplier b between both countries, do you find any challenges in order to make it happen? Of course, uh, there are always challenges to doing so because sometimes, you know, the price is not right. Okay. Uh, sometimes the price is not right, then maybe the season is not right. If the season is not right, sometimes you know it could be a matter of logistics. Who's the one going to go, who's going to be covering the logistics? Who's the one that's going to be covering that? But of course, at the end of the day, whenever there is a business dealing that's happening, it's always a win-win solution. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think the what we are trying to do is we're trying to encourage both parties to realize that in any of these business dealings, there will be 
uh, the winners in all of them. How to make sure they're feeling that, okay, you have won here and you have won there. You don't have to win 100%, but if you win 80%, it's still a win. So how do we actually be able to ensure that among the people who are going to be doing the business deals between Indonesia and Cambodia? Okay, yeah. uh, regarding to this, uh, do you think like what role the government policy play in order to promote the sustainable trade between Cambodia and Indonesia? I think um, the government plays a very important role in developing guidelines, in developing the um, policy infrastructure um, for uh, trade and investment to take place between Indonesia and Cambodia. That's why in addition to having the business people here, having the media from Cambodia also join our delegation, we also have here um, government officials, for example, a representative from the Council for Development of Cambodia. Um, so we recognize the role played not only by the businesses, the media, the academics, but also by the government in setting up policies in setting up guidelines that will later on be followed by the by the by the two people. Of course, most importantly, how the governments ensure that there is a, a, a positive and also a positive um, investment and trade environment between between the two. Yeah. In Cambodia, we know that the markets in Phnom Penh or in the big city, where can they sell to? But most of the 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 the, the, the traders. They have a very specific need of what they want. So, you know, I think if we can have uh, aggregators to have most of the products being shown in uh, Cambodia on a constant basis, that means you keep keep on having this uh, product introduction to Cambodia. That will be actually help uh, the Cambodian these are uh, traders or Cambodian importer to have more chance to take a look at other items. So it's the exposure of the products. I mean, <laughs> people in Cambodia love TikTok, right? So we, you know, TikTok can be one of the example of how can the products be shown up to you know to the to the market for for Cambodia, and like through association like us, like in the you know in the champs or from the Cardin, we can always organize the visitation from the FMCG association or retail association to come over to this uh, Cambodia to do more bilateral conversations in, uh, in Cambodia I'm sure there's a lot a lot of people who would love to work with Indonesian producing uh, companies because during the Sosedai uh, Indonesia we actually have a lot of inquiries on the produce from Indonesia yeah so more regular smaller group visit will probably help the the trade and uh, you know between the two countries yeah, yeah. so uh, so you mentioned about all the stakeholder ga yeah. stakeholder gathered yeah. here in the event including yeah. the businessmen women yeah. and also uh, the stakeholder from the yes. government so uh, do you and the in this morning we discussed about the connectivity and yes. logistic was one of among the yes. other problem that yes. we are facing so do you think what effort can be made to in order to improve and um, how optimistic are you that we can improve this? Logistics, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think um, on the issue of logistics, I think it's just a matter of volume sometimes. Um, it may not be the only the only uh, concerns that we're facing, but of course, uh, logistics is one of the things that we will try to work to. But I think uh, the more we do trading, the more we interact in businesses, is, um, it will result in the prices becoming lower. Um, so um, our hope is that the more Cambodians purchase from Indonesia or the more Indonesia exports to Cambodia or vis-a-vis -vis Cambodian products coming to Indonesia, um, there will be an economics of scale in which we will see a lowering of prices for the logistics as well. At the same time, we would like to uh, uh, thank uh, the Cambodian government as well that has been developing various infrastructures, for example, um, strengthening the ports, yeah. Um, developing new airports. Uh, these are um, areas where the infrastructure is being developed so that um, things would be logistic, um, logistical problems and challenges would be made less and less compared to in the past. Yeah. So yeah. uh, all the effort made by the Cambodian government in order to... Yes, of course. Do you, you think it <laughs> contributes a lot? Yes, yeah? of course. I think I believe that anything uh, developed by, the, by both the Indonesian as well as the Cambodian government to enhance the infrastructure of connectivity will result in logistic um, prices or logistic costs lowering 
quite massively. So this goes to various of the infrastructure projects carried out by the Cambodian government. See, this is what exactly what I mentioned earlier to have more and more frequent these uh, smaller visit because I think through the visit, the trade can become JV, can become corroborations. You get what I mean? So it's not just buy and sell. It can be a, a, a more closely corroborations for example, like what I mentioned earlier, cashew nut, right? You know, like in Indonesia, we have many flavored cashew nut. Mm. Yes. Like, like in Cambodia, we only have two types, plain or salted, right? So these are these are things that can be done. And the way that Indonesian packaging, you are right, because it's, 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 it's very creative. Indonesia is a big country, and then there's a, also big this uh, competition, right? So a lot of people start to be very creative in how do you entice your customer to, hey, I want to buy this product. So this is a potential collaboration that can be done. Because on one side, in Cambodia, we have raw materials. But in Indonesia, we, all, we have expertise to transform the raw materials into the consumer products. This is a good example on, on, how I, on what I mentioned earlier is to have more frequent visit, to have more deeper this conversation on how both parties can actually work together in the more details. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be in a in a in a in, in, in just tradings, right? Because whatever that is produced in Cambodia by Indonesian factory can be sell to many other places. Yeah. So this trade is not just bilateral, it will become multilateral. Yeah and of course, in Cambodia, we have a lot of good this uh, policy from CDC on the investment, and then also in Cambodia, we have a lot of this uh, what they call it uh, trade finance agreement with US, with Europe. So it's actually a very good opportunity for Indonesia to be participating in that particular sector also. So I also really encourage these uh, uh, Cambodian business people or Cambodian farm owners to be more open to talk to these uh, Indonesian businesses, see how they can actually collaborate together. And it's not just trading between the both countries, but together, hand in hand, both parties coming together to sell to the third, third party. I think this is much more these are beneficial for both. Yeah. So. I think, yes, um, the participation of Cambodian um, businesses in the Trade Expo International, uh, Indonesia has been quite uh, extensive, meaning that this is not the first time okay. Cambodians have participated. And I would like to assure you again that number of business deals were actually developed um, in the past during this particular occasion, but of course previously. Like for example, you know, a particular company last year, um, uh, Sign an MOU with uh, with a company in Indonesia, and now they've already started exporting products to uh, in, uh, to Cambodia for the last year or so, and also with other previous uh, companies as well. A lot of them actually managed to found their their um, their partners, their trading partners during events such as the Trade Expo here in Indonesia. So I, I believe that every single year there is always some new uh, trade cooperation being developed by. Uh, the Cambodian delegation that comes to Indonesia and by those Indonesians who actually are meeting with Cambodian people or Cambodian businesses here at the Trade Expo. Yeah. So, so what, what are the main sectors that both sides are doing together? Yeah. Um, with regards to the Trade Expo Indonesia, because the focus here is a lot on food, a lot on clothing and handicrafts and furniture. Um, in the past, it has been focused mostly on um, food and beverage as well as um, um, clothing. Um, clothing be their um, traditional clothing or various types of clothing as well, which are not available in Cambodia because Cambodia has a good garment industry, but there are some types of clothing that are more available here in Indonesia compared to Cambodia, but food and beverage for sure. So that's why you will see that in the last five years or so, there are more Indonesian food and beverage brands occupying the shopping aisles and supermarkets in Cambodia. So I think that's a very classical uh, result of the Trade Expo Indonesia because a lot of these companies became exposed to Indonesian food products in um, events such as Trade Expo Indonesia. Yes, sir, but about the trade you know, agreement or regulation between Cambodia and Indonesia, do you think it is fairly good now or is there anything more to be done to smoothen you know, the transaction? Let's say, sir? I think every country has their own this, uh, potential over their consumer products or their internal produce products. So at the moment, I think it's adequate because 
these are both part, both countries are under the ASEAN agreement are actually quite fair for everybody. But I will I would love to see if there's any specific trades that can enhance further, like what you mentioned earlier, maybe the trade of rice or the trade of certain agriculture products like cashew nuts, you know, that can be have a special agreement that can further, you know, enhance the the collaboration between the two countries. And specifically, you know, taxation side will actually and sorry, not taxation, the logistic side will definitely help to reduce the cost of bringing the produce from Cambodia to Indonesia. Yeah, so these are a lot of sectors that probably both sides can work much together. Correct. Yeah. For example, like Indonesia, we have shipment directly from the port of Indonesia to to Thailand to Vietnam. I believe Vietnam, uh, this is Cambodia, can be actually part of the part of the destination. And and I hope and I love to see if there's there's these uh, logistics companies that are willing to do that. So um, I think you know. Um, I, as ambassador of um, Indonesia and Cambodia, of course, my main responsibility is to strengthen cooperation between Indonesia and Cambodia. Yet at the same time, I see that there's a lot of potential as well for Indonesia to work with the region as a whole. Because Cambodia alone is only 17 million people. But Cambodia can be a hub for Indonesian uh, cooperation with the remaining countries in the Mekong Basin, you know. So, so what we're hoping is that um, somehow uh, companies that exist in Vietnam can cooperate with companies that come from Indonesia to do projects in Cambodia, for yeah. example, or company that exists in Thailand or Laos do, or a company that exists in Thailand and Cambodia can work together with Indonesian company to do a project in Laos. And these are some of the things that I think needs to be integrated so that um, there are there are more uh, not only cooperation but uh, partnerships yeah. among the countries um, in the in the Mekong Basin. And I think Indonesia for the longest time we haven't put too much attention on the Mekong Basin, except for for example Thailand or Vietnam. But I think Cambodia. Uh, Laos and Myanmar also needs to be given attention by Indonesia and this is one of the reasons why we developed the program, the forum this morning. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> but yeah. for me, so let's say, yes. you know, what we are doing now to connect, you know, the businesses to, the, I mean, the businesses between the two countries is yeah. also a good way to increase trade. Higher, yes. Let's say like that, sir. Yeah. But is there anything, you know, like indirect, for example, yeah. you know, through, let's say, youth and youth education oh. or maybe <laughs> culture or maybe tourism, yeah. sir? Yeah. You know, pop culture is yeah. also a good way to increase awareness yeah. between the two countries. Yeah. So, is there any indirect way to yes. increase trade, sir? Yes. So, of course, um, uh, trade happens because people recognize the value of certain products coming from certain countries. Uh, for sure, people want to to listen to K-pop because it comes from Korea. For sure, people want to taste the hamburger because it comes from certain other countries as well. So what it is is that, yes, in order for Indonesian trade with Cambodia to increase, there needs to be an awareness of the brands that are coming from Indonesia and the fact that Indonesia does have quality products as well. So yes, it is very important for us to also raise the profile of Indonesia um, among the Cambodian people and that's why the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia in Phnom Penh is not only organizing events like his, like this, which is Focus for the business people, but also other events. Um, in November, we're intending to do a film festival um, showcasing Indonesia's films um, in, in Cambodia. And I know that a lot of Indonesian films are very popular in Cambodia. And hopefully in December as well, we'll be doing a cultural performance that uh, we would invite um, hundreds of uh, Cambodians to come and see the cooperation that we can develop um, by culture, Indonesia and Cambodia, and see where the similarities exist uh, among our two cultures for the longest time. So yeah, these are some of the other activities that we are doing. So we're not only doing it for the businesses, but we're also doing it for other segments of the society in Cambodia. And hopefully by that, we will have a more comprehensive approach towards uh, bringing the society of Indonesia and Cambodia closer together.